Okay, so I'm going to get busy cutting out the shorts pattern, the shorts pieces. Initially, I thought that I would cut these out in the kitchen using the island, but I've since decided I just cleared off my messy sewing table and I'm just gonna do it in here. Today we're going to cut out the shorts out of this Darling Gardening print from Stitch and Sparkle. And the way we do that is, this is our layout right here, Let me zoom you in a little bit. Okay, so the black area, it says right here, black area denotes fabric. So that's what this is right here. So here we have piece 13 and we have piece 14 right here. 13 is the front section of the shorts. 14 is the back section of the shorts. So for the size I am making, we need slightly more than one yard of fabric. And one thing to, do, to notice right away, especially if you're making pants, the inside leg seam is facing one direction on the fabric. You'll see it's going up toward the selvages. And the back leg, inside leg seam is going toward the fold. Because if both were going in the same direction, then you would end up with basically two left feet. It, it won't work, so you have to have Inside leg seams going in one direction toward the fold or the selvage and the same thing in the front. So we'll lay out our two pattern pieces and get them pinned on. Okay guys, so I don't know where I was. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue cutting out the shorts. I'm gonna try to preserve this section to make a patch pocket for the back um, of these shorts. So if I just cut across, I would end up losing a lot of that fabric. And remember, that's on the fold. So, what I'm doing is just rolling this up, and I'll just continue cut, cutting up this side right here. So what you will do if you are doing this pattern and you are not putting pockets on or in these two pieces, the next step for you would be to take a front, which I will mark. It helps to see. Okay just for consistency's sake. So now you're gonna take one front and one back and you're going to match up this notch right here on the inside leg and you're going to stitch those together. I'm going to pin them because I'm making pockets and I just want these to be 
properly placed because I need to figure out where I want that pocket to go on the back but just in case you are sewing along and want to go on to the next step this is what you will do you will pin so that you have a front section and a back section together at the inside leg seam now while I'm sitting right here I want to measure this is the inseam okay and I'm roughly at nine and a half inches okay ouch okay there's one and now we're going to do the exact same thing with the second set so Okay, so I have those two pinned together, and then you can go ahead and go stitch if you wish. I'm going to make the pocket real quick for the back. Now I'm going to write on out, right on here. Is it two, four, seven, six? Okay. Cut one or two, depending on how many you would like. Alrighty, so there's that. So the next step is to stitch these inside legs together. I'm not going to put the pattern pieces in the envelope because I'm not done with them yet. pair of shorts to knock around a farm in. Okay, so I'm going to stitch the inner leg. I'm going to do a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance to do that. And I'll be doing it on both of these pieces. So And I have my machine in the needle down position. So every time I stop, my needle stops in the fabric, in the machine, and things will not slip out of the you know position that I have them in. So one of the things that you want to think about when you're making clothes for yourself, especially things that you're going to wear like uh, pants, shorts, skirts, under underarm sleeves, that kind of thing, where do you discover that you have the most stress on your clothes? And those are the areas that you should um, reinforce with extra stitching. Um, two rows of stitching is a little bit better than one row of stitching. You don't want to get too carried away. Two is plenty, and you don't want to stitch right on top of the first row because that can actually weaken the fabric. It is punching holes in your fabric after all. But the next thing I'm going to do is just finger press these little seams semi-open. I don't want them 
completely flat against the fabric. I'm going to put my machine in a zigzag and I'm going to zigzag along each of these raw edges. And that will keep them from fraying as they are worn and washed and worn and washed. So. really kind of gives it a nice touch. So now this needs to be pressed and when I come back we'll continue. We have that inside leg seam is pressed on both sides and our instructions are now going to be, remember the shorts are on page four of four so here we are. The next step is to lay these out right sides together. And the way you know when you're looking at a pattern if it means right sides together or wrong sides together, and of course right sides, what they mean by right sides is the, the print side is the right side. So what they want us to do is line these up right sides together and we're going to match these inside leg seams like so and the notches on each of these pieces like this. And the way you know what we're talking about is the light, the white is the wrong side and the dark is the print side. So you can see here on this inside seam that we just did, it's dark because what we're looking at on that seam is the right side of the fabric. Okay, so now we're going to stitch from the waist of the pants up here, the top edge, all the way around all the way, all the way, all the way back around to the top edge on the other side. So all of this. I do recommend that you either pin it or clip it together because it will fall and it will slip. And pinning it will just make this step so much easier. Okay, so I believe we are again taking a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, yes. And then we're going to go back over this area from notch to notch with a 3 8 seam allowance to reinforce this crotch area. at the notch right here, go back in at 3 eighths of an inch and stitch again. Very good. And now we will be pressing these stitches, these seam allowances, I'm sorry, open. Yes. So what we just stitched was the front seam and the back seam. So now before I put the side seams in, I want to look to see it's this way this is this is the back right where's the B B okay now I know that the waist will be gathered up with elastic but I kind of need to know where I would want the pocket to be if I were the wearer of these shorts Right 
sides together like this along the line that you've created and then you're going to stitch on each side just that little spot right there. I'll be right back. So first thing we're going to do is put this machine in zigzag mode. And we're going to zigzag across this top right here. Now, put the machine back in straight stitch, and then just about the width of my foot is the stitching that I wanted to make on this pocket. We'll check that and see if I'm right. Yeah, it's a little teeny smidge off. This is a little bit bigger than that, but it's not going to hurt anything. It's not smaller than, and that's kind of the best part. Okay, so what I will do now is I'm going to stitch forward, stitch backward, stitch forward, and stop. We will now flip this this way and as you can see it's pulling this side seam business in like this and I would go ahead and do a zigzag but this is going to be stitched down to the pocket and it's not going to be or to the shorts and it's not going to be an issue should it try to ravel I don't think it could but it's not really going to be a problem. Um, before I do any of that though, I do want to go back over to my ironing board. I want to press these down exactly on that line that they want to naturally fall to. And I need to stitch the bottom up by the same amount. So I will go ahead and take care of this one as well. I will meet you back here. Okay, so now the decision I have to make is, do I want the blue thread from the bobbin to be on the outside of my pockets, or do I want the white thread from the needle to be on the outside of my pockets? And I think I'm going to go with the white. Now, you do not want, generally speaking, you do not want to have two rows of stitching on the outside of a patch pocket and if you stitch this down now and then stitch it to the back of the shorts then you'd have two rows of stitching so closing up the top of the pocket like so and pinning these to the back of the pants where you have marked and then stitching it down is the way to go and keeping the sides open makes that process so much easier you can do a decorative you can do like a little square or a V all sorts of ways to accomplish that I think I will do a V so I'll lift my presser foot turn my presser foot and I want to get close to the edge here. Trim out those threads and there's our pocket which I think, sorry about my arm, I think that turned out really cute and we're going to go ahead and do the one on the other side. Okay, trim off those threads now the inside of the pants or the shorts will have blue stitching lines from I'm trying to feel for the pins. Oh. 
okay, from the bobbin thread in my case. I don't consider that to be a problem. All right, so the next step now is to fold your pants or your shorts so that the side seams are matched up with right sides together. And what you should have is a back and a back facing you, or a front and a front. So either this or this. And you should be able to determine that this is the crotch area here, and this is a leg, and this is a leg, and these are the side seams. Now before I go on and do the side seams, I do want to take this right here, this area above the crotch in both the front and the back, and I want to press it open, zigzag, make sure that they're not, that this is not going to ravel during wear, washing and wear um, on the shorts. The other thing is, you also want to make sure that this is at the top nice and flat. So I'm going to put my machine in zigzag and then just continue on like I did with the, the front inner leg. All right, and this is that final side. So we're done with all of that. We'll trim off all the threads and make sure everything is exactly the way we want it. And I need to go fold down my waistband and give it a good press. I have decided to fold this all the way and press. So even though I did the zigzag stitch, it just was a little bit too raggedy looking for me. So I went ahead and folded under that quarter of an inch and the inch on top of that. So I have a, like a nicely somewhat you know finished looking band for the waist. Now the back is where you want to have the center back seam. I know this is the back and this is the center back seam because I have a pocket and a pocket. So this is the center back seam and I'm going to start stitching just about an inch and a half to two inch inches away from that center back seam. going to do the exact same thing with one exception. I can go all the way around on the very top edge. Move my needle all the way back over to the right and get it as close to the edge on that fold as I can and I'm just going to go all the way around. I don't have to leave an opening on this one. What we need is a safety pin or a bodkin that we can thread onto our elastic. So a lot of people will put their safety pin through the elastic right at the very edge there. And I just find that I, I just feel like I have a little bit more control if I do that right there. I don't feel like I'm going to tear the elastic out. Okay, so I look for the back center seam right here and put the elastic through and then just pull the safety pin. Make sure the elastic stays straight and does not get twisted. 
I, I am, you know, I'm including a lot of elastic here. Now, the thing to do so you don't lose any of this is go ahead and then do the same thing to this end of the elastic and pin this whole thing to the outside of the back waistband, not through the elastic though, because I want to get that fed in there. So there's that. I like the way that looks. I think the waistband is really cute with the double stitching, one at the top, one at the bottom. And I don't mind the blue thread. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and do blue thread on the hem. But the thing about the hem is she wanted her leg length to be 16 inches from this waist to the finished hem. All right, well, I will have to mark that with a ruler and my friction pin. Okay, so I have pressed under the hem on one of the legs, and that is measuring out at 16 inches from the waist to the hem. So currently we have a pocket that a phone can fit in. That's kind of the main thing. You need something for your for your phone. Um, it's a nice length finished off. The waistband is a nice width. It looks like it would be very comfortable. And while you could easily wear this as a pair of pajama bottoms, you could also just go straight outside and start filling the water trough and doing a cow count and feeding the dogs and you know they're just it's, it's a hundred the temperature today was in the 90s but the real feel was a hundred and eight degrees and you still have to do all of those chores and trust me you don't want to be wearing heavy clothing so that's the main purpose behind making this nice little lightweight, comfortable pair of shorts. Anyway, I hope everybody has a fantastic evening. Um, like and subscribe if you wish, and I will see you next time.